Hello, I'm excited to be sharing a wonderful process called Soul Collage with you today on the World's Greatest Summit. Thank you to Goddess Guidebook for hosting this. My name is Katherine Anderson and I'm a Soul Collage facilitator in Charlotte, North Carolina. I trained with Sina Frost, the originator of the Soul Collage process in 2004. Sina is the author of the book Soul Collage and the later edition, Soul Collage Evolving. Soul Collage is an intuitive process that will allow you to tap into your inner wisdom. It's really easy, it's something that anyone can do, and the best part is that you don't have to go and buy expensive products to do this. You can use recycled magazine images, photographs that you've taken, old catalogs, and Together with cardboard, scissors and glue, that's all you need to make your Soul Collage cards. Today I'd like to tell you a little more about Soul Collage and show you how you can make your own deck of Soul Collage cards. In front of me you can see some of the cards that I've made over the years. I have a pile more cards here. And you can see the different colors, different images. Anything goes on a Soul Collage card. There's no right or wrong. I find I often make cards when I'm feeling a little anxious or uncertain and the cards always help me find an answer or even just feel a bit more relaxed by the fact that I've created something with my hands. The top you can see my source card. It's the one that looks like a big sun that I made out of a photograph that I took and underneath that is my fool card. The Fool is an archetype that plays out in most of our lives. And next to that, the woman with the setting a bird free is the first card I ever made. And when I made that, I realized that was my teacher card. Above that, you'll see the Dalai Lama. He belongs in my community suit and is one of the people that I turn to when I need advice on how to approach something in a compassionate and even light-hearted way. So you can see there are many different kinds of cards. The young girl standing on the rock is the card that I call the seeker. And then my Mandela card is another card that is in my community deck and is one that I turn to when I need to approach things in a way that incorporates forgiveness and a higher vision for everyone else. First thing you need is a pile of magazines. And I like to approach making soul collage cards from a right brain perspective. Your right brain is the intuitive part of your brain. It's the one that doesn't think in a linear way. This is a card that I made to represent my left brain, which is my linear brain. And in a sense, I often feel that when I'm only working in my left brain, as you can see in this card, my body, my head is disconnected from my body. However, when I'm working in my right brain, there's a lot more flow. I'm totally in my body, I'm more in the moment, and I'm listening to my body. So when you start looking through magazines, and any magazines will do, Obviously ones with really nice pictures are great. I love travel magazines. The way I start is I will just go through the magazine looking for anything that might appeal to me. Now as I teach soul collage, often in magazines the images that may not speak to me, but they'll often speak to people in my classes. So I will tear out magazines and I'll start a box of images. And anything that I think has potential goes into the box to be used. On this side, I have the images that I think I might use, and then the parts of the magazine that I'm going to send for recycling. And this is really a great thing to do when you've had a busy day, because it is very, very relaxing. Um, it's almost meditative. One of the things to be sure not to do is start reading the articles. Do that beforehand. Um, 
because that'll distract you, that'll take you out of your right brain because language is linear and it'll put you back into your left brain. So just keep going, looking at the images and try and do it reasonably fast so that your brain doesn't have time to register to the words. And it's pretty much like this. You get, the, you get the feeling of what to do to do that. Once you've got enough images, a pile that you feel you can work at, then you can start making some cards. To make cards, put the images that you're going to use around you. Get some cardstock that you can make your cards on. I use a five inch by seven inch size. Um, you could use a five inch by eight inch size. You could use something smaller. Find something that works well in your hands that you feel comfortable with. As a photographer, 5x7 is a size that I'm really used to and so that's the size I like to use. It's also a nice size to put in a frame if you want to hand someone a card as a gift. I also create a frame that I can put around the images to sense where things are going to go and what the finished image is going to look like. It's really helpful in doing that. Um, I often have a couple of them around because I sometimes work on a couple of cards at the same time. I wait for them to sort of speak to me. And this is really interesting because I just put down this, I just picked up two images and put those down there and I really like what happened there. But that happened so fast that I sort of need to sit with it a little bit and see is there anything else that needs to go into the image, into the card. And you'll find a lot of my cards are made with just two or three images, but your cards can have 50 images on. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Um, you just got to feel it in your body, feel what feels right to you. And what's right for you might not be right for me. So really trust yourself, trust your intuition here. Some days I will sit and just cut out images. This is quite a complex image um, of strands, but I really liked it and knew that one day I'd like to use it in a card. So I just cut it out and one day when the cards perhaps weren't coming together. And that means on another day I, can, I have it here to just start playing with and putting down on different backgrounds and try to get a sense of what goes together. Yeah. Anything like me as a young child, you probably collected images. I remember having tons of scrapbooks and I'd paste images in and put words with them and poetry and I love doing that. And so in a way, soul collage is an adult form of what I used to do as a child. One thing is with soul collage, we don't use words. And the reason we don't use words is because we want the images to speak to us. And on some days, the images might have different things to say than on other days, depending a lot on your mood sometimes. So just sit and play with all your images. Is there anything that sort of speaks to you? It can take a while. It can be very meditative. It can be relaxing. And then when something doesn't, you know, nothing happens to come together for a while, I'll just let it go. And I'll just start cutting around my images so that they're ready when I find the right backgrounds and the right parts to go with them. And if you remember scissors that you used to have at school, they were really blunt. Don't use those sort of scissors to get nice images. These are really great scissors. They're nice and sharp. They allow you to get really around things and cut well. And they, I'm sure there are a lot of different kinds. These are called cutter B scissors, which I really like. So I saw this earlier and I think it might make a, a good card, but I've got to just sit with it a bit 
doesn't happen instantly. But there's just something in that that speaks to me. Often it's the color that speaks to me, and I'm not sure why, but there's something about the color of this little boy on his tire with the color of the leaves and the trees behind that speaks to me. So I think I'm going to make that into a card. So the first thing I'm going to do is get one of my blank cards. This is the way I like to do it. And as I always tell my students, there are a hundred ways to do things. I just hope I find the easiest way to do things, and that's the one I like to share with you. So I always put my card down and lift up my frame, which will allow me to cut around the image. And I always leave about a quarter of an inch around the edge, because if I try and cut it exactly, it will never fit exactly, and this needs to be easy. So here I have my image just a little bit bigger than my card. And what I'll do then is I will glue down my image onto the card. I particularly like using these glue sticks because they're square, they're acid free and they stick pretty well but also allow you to move your image slightly you know, for a few seconds after you've put it down, in case you put something down in the wrong place. Okay, so I have that nicely smoothed down on here. Now you can use scissors to cut around the edge of your card. I, again, found a way that's really easy for me, and I used to make quilts, and I still have my supplies from that, and so I use a rotary cutter and a cutting mat to cut around the edges. It is not necessary to have one of these to make your cards. As I said earlier, there's very little equipment that you do need. This is just nice and easy for me, and I'm in the habit of doing it, so So I have a card that is nicely cut to the edges here. And I can now put this image back on and work out exactly where I might want it to go. I know I want the edge of the rope to be here. Now do I want it that way or would it fit better that way? No, I think I like it this way. And I think I like the fact that there's this little space between the leaves and I'm going to put the card there, put the image in that space. And I'll put him down there. He just makes me feel happy when I look at, at him on that swing tire. So I don't know why I made that card, it just felt right. So again, we're not going into our left brain, we're not saying what is it all about, we're just playing at this stage. So what do we do with the cards once we've made them? Well, there are a couple of questions that are part of the soul collage process. And the first question we ask the card is, who are you? And we allow the card to answer with the words, I am the one who... And then you just look at your card, you look deeply at your card, and let the image speak to you. You don't come up with the words, you allow the image to actually speak. So it's like putting yourself in the place of the image. Some cards will represent different parts of you. For instance, my seeker is part of who I am. And these are referred to as the committee suit in the Soul Collage deck. I really love the committee members because they make me realize that I'm not one dimensional. I'm made up of so many different parts. There's part of me that might want to cocoon at times, just disappear under the blankets and have time away from the world. But there's part of me that wants to go out into the world as well. And there are other parts of me, this 
is my teacher card. The one, I am the one who wants to help others find their wings. I love that card, it's one of my favorites. This card represents my throat chakra and it's about finding my voice. I'm the one who is excited to have found my voice. And the community cards represent people in your life. They could be family members alive or dead. They could be people you've never met but who you admire, whose energy you would like to have around you. And so a couple of those are my Mandela card is one of my community cards. I also have an Oprah card. Um, I have a Dalai Lama card. I have a card that I made to represent my best friend who lives in South Africa and I live in the United States. And this doesn't have a photograph of her on the card, but it's how I feel when I'm with her. That sense of just total relaxation, knowing that you're accepted for who you are. Then we have the archetypal realm, which we call the council cards. And a couple of mine fall into that. Um, this would be my healer card. This is to remind me that we are all healers. But that's just an archetypal part of us, that we are all able to heal ourselves. And the soul collage cards I find very, very healing to make and to work with. Ah, oh, this is another one of my committee members. This one is my inner critic. And there are times when this inner critic really speaks so loudly and I don't want to listen to it. And I'll actually take my card and say, thank you, I hear you, but today you're not welcome. And I will put the inner critic card outside my studio door, just to remind me to let go of that for an instance. So once I've asked the card, who are you? And the card has said, I am the one who. The other question that I ask the card is what do you want from me? And the card will respond, I want you to. The cards remind us of those things that we know that we've often forgotten. Images access our inner wisdom and they are able to get to that part of ourselves that we often limit with our mind. There's a quote by a German mystic called Meister Eckhart that probably best expresses what soul collage is about or how it really works and he says when the soul wishes to experience something she throws an image of the experience out before her and enters into the image images are really powerful they're healing and I encourage you to start playing with them. I really hope that you will try soul collage for yourself you have everything you need to do it probably sitting at home right now. If you want to learn more about soul collage or would like to do it in a group setting, look for a facilitator in your area. You can find facilitators by going onto the soul collage website. If you want to train as a facilitator, there are also trainers throughout the world. I'll be training in South Africa next year to train facilitators to teach the process. So if you really enjoy it, once you've made your own cards, there's plenty more you can do with it. There are a number of online resources to guide you in your soul collage practice. On the soulcollage.com website, you will find information on making cards, where to find a soul collage facilitator, or how to become a soul collage facilitator. On the website kaleidosoul.com, you can find ebooks, interviews, and online classes on soul collage as well as a community of people who love creating cards. And of course, I'd love you to visit my website, katherineandersonstudio.com, for inspiration. Thank you for listening. I've really enjoyed sharing the soul collage process with you, and I hope you'll have years of fun using it.